Hi everybody, welcome to EcoDriver. My name is Helmut. This video is part one of the Kia eNero or Nero Electric trilogy. We go out onto the EcoDriver loop to find out about the real life consumption if this car is driven really efficiently. Technically, this car is almost identical to the Hyundai Kona, which I have already tested and you'll find the video in the description box below. We have here the model with the bigger battery, 64 kilowatt hours, 150 kilowatt motor. WLTP is stated with 15.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, but this includes charging losses. Unland weight of this very car is 1,866 kilograms, 4,105 pounds. This car, as well as the Kona, is known to be very efficient. And with the Kona, we had 10.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. I expect pretty much the same here. Below 11 should be easily achievable. One very positive thing this car has, as does his brother, is the coast mode. You can set the region to zero, so if you lift your foot off the accelerator, there is no resistance at all. No braking and the car coasts along. If you then use the pedals or the foot pedal to reduce the speed, region works as per normal. Why is it positive that this car is coasting with zero region? Well, this allows a much more efficient way of driving, as braking is always a waste of energy for you as a driver. I know physically the energy isn't wasted, it's transformed, but for you as a driver it's lost. And you only regenerate about 35-50% to 50 of the energy you had to invest beforehand. So you never get enough energy back to be more efficient than when you don't invest the energy in the first place. If you want to know more about this, I recommend the other two videos with the e-Nero a comparison of driving styles, little versus much regen, and the mountain consumption and regeneration test. You can find the links to those videos at the end of this video and in the description box below. For those viewers who are on this channel for the first time, uh, we do the eco travel loop with every car, and you can see it here. It starts at the southern edge of Innsbruck, where the green arrow is. After one kilometer out of town, at a 30 kilometer per hour zone, we start a climb, which elevates us around 360 meters, 1100 feet, followed by rolling hills, a descent, an open road section, motorway and city traffic at the end. The overall length is around 75 kilometers, 46 miles. After every section, we check the overall and sectoral consumption. And at the end, we analyze this trip. The cameras will be on all the time to show A, how am I driving to achieve this consumption, and B, to prove that there is no need to go slow to be efficient. On the contrary. The weather is perfect. I hope you enjoy this trip, the scenery, and I'll talk to you later. At the end of the climb, we have 34.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. We are now approaching the hilly section, and here it's important to, as I call it, play with the road. Try to use the change of gradient to build up momentum on the way down and take this kinetic energy into the next climb, and so you can reduce the amount of energy you use. If it goes up on a short hill, don't try to keep the speed at all cost, or even accelerate, as this costs you a lot of energy. Do it when the road flattens or goes down after the top, just like on a roller coaster.
23.9 kWh per 100 km at the end of the hills. On the way down, I expect this car to regen a lot as Hyundai Kia EVs are known for their excellent regen ability. How much it can be, you can see in the video of the regen test I've done today as well. On the descent, we have two flat sections, which we should be able to pass without actively using energy. Hopefully we don't have a slow car, a tractor or a bus in front of us, which then could be a problem. Eleven point zero kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers after the descent. We are now on roughly the same altitude as where we started, and you see, mountains are no excuse for a high consumption, as this is about where I expect us to end up with the consumption after the full distance. Ten point two kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers after the open road section, despite lots of slow cars and other obstacles not allowing us to go as efficient as we normally would and could do. On the motorway, we have a restriction to a hundred kilometers per hour, sixty-two miles per hour, as per local law. Normally, in Austria, you would be allowed to go one hundred and thirty, but in this section here, it's a hundred. EVs would normally be allowed to go faster, 130, but uh, for comparison reasons we stick to the 100 and normally traffic here is so heavy that you can't go faster anyway. Or at least it doesn't make sense to try to go faster because all the others are going only 100 kilometers an hour. At the end of the motorway, we have 11.2 kWh per 100 km, which supports my optimism to stay below 11 at the end. Now coming into the city, here it's important to keep the car in motion, to avoid braking and coming to a full stop. Of course it's not always possible, but if it is, let's do this.
It seems that all the traffic lights are against us today. Most of them are red. Finally, here we can roll through. You see that I've started reducing the speed quite early in order to hopefully avoid a full stop and we can roll through with around 30 km per hour. It was really annoying today with all the traffic and the traffic lights, but still we see here 10.7 kWh per 100 km. Not too bad, I'd say. And now let's check the details. Well, if we look at the sectoral and overall consumption here, that's really impressive. Below 10 in the city and overland, the consumption is very close to the Kona. But given the slightly higher weight of the e Nero, in the next table we see it's just ahead of its brother. You see here the, the details of the trip and the technical details of the car. This table is in order of the weight specific consumption kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers per 100 kilograms of weight. I use this unit as due to the high efficiency of EVs, external factors are much more important as with ICE cars. So putting the consumption in relation to the weight gives an indication of the general efficiency of the vehicle, irrespective of the driver. And those drivetrains that are commonly referred to as the most efficient ones, the likes of Hyundai, Kia and Volkswagens, they, are, they occupy the first five spots here. I haven't tested a Tesla yet, but hopefully this will happen soon. We see here that the e Nero is not only the most efficient overall, it's the most efficient car on the way up with 1.827 kWh per 100 km per 100 kg of weight and uh, this shows that it's not only the, re the, the regeneration, the good regeneration of uh, this car, it's also the general efficiency of the motor and of the drivetrain overall. So the result of this test was more or less as expected and if you want to see more of this car you can uh, find the video of the mount consumption and regen test up here. Uh, the comparison of driving styles, uh, lots of regen versus little regen, is down here. And if you're generally interested in this topic and in uh, my videos, feel free to subscribe to this channel. And if you hit the notification bell, you won't miss any new video. That's it for the e Nero. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you next time.